Sound, testing, sound, check, one, two, testing. Okay. <coughs> testing, testing the mic. One, two, help, help. Testing. Testing one, two. <clears throat> okay. Hello everybody and welcome to Henry's Kitchen where today we're going to be making uh, Henry's world-class shepherd's pie. I made shepherd's pie very early in my YouTube career um, and uh, it turned out to be a hit except for that uh, the person that was making it with me accidentally threw it in the trash so this time I'm doing it alone so there shouldn't really be an issue. Um, I have a little bit of an allergy situation that I'm fighting at the moment, uh, so I apologize ahead of time if I do any sniffling or blowing my nose. Um, I think the problem is uh, that later in the uh, summertime, um, allergy, uh, like allergic pollens or something, start floating around the air. It's just it's just nature's way of saying fuck you basically but uh eventually the fall is going to come and uh i guess it'll be better um can you hear me okay flight marine 99 says was it your neighbor bill and the answer is yes uh bill who's no longer with us, so maybe I'll, de I'll dedicate this episode to Bill. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about shepherd's pie and world-class shepherd's pie, which is what we're going to be making today. Shepherd's pie, or in its French version, hachis parmentier, is a savory dish of cooked minced meat topped with mashed potato and baked the meat okay used maybe either previously cooked or freshly minced 
Um, the usual meats are beef or lamb. Today we're going to be using beyond beef. The two English terms have been used interchangeably since they came into use in the late 18th and 19th century, although some writers insist that a shepherd's pie could contain lamb or mutton and cottage pie beef. So I've, I've heard the term mutton a lot. I don't know exactly what it is. I thought it was a type of sideburns or something. But uh, what is the deal with shepherd's pie? I heard it it's good, but is it good, though? That's Seth9609. Seth, um, shepherd's pie is delicious. Um, it makes, you know, one making of it is huge. So you're going to have that for the whole week. And uh, it's got potato, it's got your meat in there, it's got a little bit of dairy. It's a delicious dish. Uh, I will say, however, that it's very, very labor intensive. We've got a very difficult dish ahead of us today. So, you know, this is not your grandma's shepherd pie. This is, uh, this is the real deal. I mean, just looking at the steps, there's like 19 steps in the uh, recipe plus the ingredients go on forever. I'll just give you a quick shot of the ingredients there. Um, and uh, it's not gonna be easy, but as I always say, uh, anything that's worth doing rarely is. So, let's go into um, some of the history behind cottage pie. Oh, cottage pie, I guess, is something you could call it also. Shepherd's pie or cottage pie, both of okay. them work. Oh, um, real quickly, I just want to do a quick uh, check here. Uh, I, I like to find something online that shows us what, what it is that we're going for in the end, but I, I, did, I should have done that ahead of time, I guess, but... Doesn't seem to be working. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick Google search for shepherd's pie. If you'll just uh, hang out for a second. And I'm going to take the first picture that comes up. Um, yeah. This is the classic shepherd's pie. Let's uh, save that and then... Uh, I'm still uh, getting used to a lot of the technical stuff here, but it's very important. And uh, there we go, voila. So this uh, came up from a website called The Wholesome Dish. Uh, I'm not stealing their content. I just, uh, you know, want to show you. That's what the shepherd's pie looks like. That's what we're going to end up with at the end of this journey. And it's going to be very exciting, but it, again, it's going to be very difficult. A couple of questions here. Uh, everyone type force and says, I can't even count to 19. Okay, I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, adult illiteracy is a thing. And I don't know if counting also counts as illiteracy, but it's definitely uh, something that you want to look into. Um, so we feel bad for that person. View to full gen says, why is it called shepherd's pie? Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, according to the American Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the first known use of the term was in 1854. In British usage in the 1850s, the term referred to a Scottish dish that contained a mutton and diced potato filling inside a pastry crust Neither shepherd's pie nor cottage pie was mentioned in the original edition of Mrs. Beaton's Household Management in 1861. Sorry, there's a lot of shit here. I'm trying to get to your question of why they came up. Usually that would be under etymology. Uh, I don't want to just guess and say, you know, I guess shepherds made it, but uh, I actually probably think that's what it is. Um, okay, Dorothy Hartley quotes an old verse, Vicarage Mutton, showing not only the uses to which the joint was put, 
but also the interchangeability of the terms shepherds and cottage. So a shepherd, of course, is a one who herds she uh, sheep. And uh, this would probably be a good dish for them because it's very labor intensive and it's also very low return and high in calories. Um, okay, Phoenix uh, 1332 says shepherds super simple to do. Uh, we'll find out. Um, Killian for weird, why potato instead of tomatoes? Uh, we're going to be using tomato paste for this dish, so there will be tomato. Uh, but potato is a little bit more uh, substantial. As they say, it, it sticks to your ribs better than a tomato. Um, Pseudomantis the Wise says, I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite stream of the Citadel. That's from uh, Salamantis the Wise. I don't understand that, but uh, maybe you do. Maybe it's a game reference. Uh, Chuck Little, is cottage cheese good in co and cottage pie? Uh, okay. Cottage cheese, cottage pie. All right. Contrabass something uh, subscribed. Contrabass, contrabass kazoo. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, thanks for everybody uh, subscribing. Um, all right, we got a lot of work to do. First things first, uh, there's a birthday from Linda816. Um, I, on the Discord, mentioned that it was Linda's birthday. So uh, happy birthday, Linda. And um, we're going to be doing a little birthday song for you a little later on. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I just want to say that we know here at Henry's Kitchen that birthdays are a very very difficult time in someone's life. It means that you are advancing in age um, okay. and that the process of entropy or uh, oh, hi. for lack of a better word, uh, dying. Hey, thanks beautiful Jen, uh, gifted five subs. Um, the process is accelerating and the older that you get, the closer you are to um, your fate or whatever. But uh, so uh, I, all we can do here at Henry's Kitchen is say, please, please do your best to try to stay upbeat. Maybe have a little wine. If you're doing some wine with your uh, cooking, I, I always tell people the easy rule of thumb is red wine goes with red meat, white wine goes with white meat, white cheese goes with white wine, red cheese goes with red wine, same with bread. Uh, and if you keep your uh, foods the same basic color, then you won't have to worry about having all kinds of wine with your meal. But anyway, so Linda816, we're pulling for you and we're going to sing a little birthday song for you later on while we're waiting for our shepherd's pie to come out of the oven. Oh, by the way, this is an oven dish. Um, so make sure that you preheat your ovens. Uh, I've already had mine preheating since last night because I didn't know if it was going to be a dish where you had to heat it or not. So I'm good there. Um, Watts, uh, thank you. Yeah, there was a common uh, misunderstanding that happened in uh, the last time that I made shepherd's pie. Speaking of fate, uh, Spelzing says, okay. uh, is roast beef still alive? Yes, roast beef is still alive. He's in his box, but I had to borrow his camera. Uh, so we'll, we'll get some footage of my cat roast beef later, but I had to borrow his camera to capture this thing. But let's go ahead and uh, let's start making shepherd's pie. <clears throat> start with the ingredients here uh, we've got some chopped or ground uh, beef or lamb or mutton whatever you want to call okay. it I'm gonna be using beyond beef um, thanks lurcher lurcher or er, just resubscribe thank you um, we've got our Russell potatoes we've got two tablespoons of flour we're gonna use two tablespoons of our uh, tomato paste. I've got our uh, herbs and spices over here. I like to put a little common and then I've got some pep pampica. 
you can use uh, the stoked Pampika, but I'm going to be just using the regular this time. Worcester. Now, let's get to the bottom of this. It's If you look on it, it says Worcestershire sauce. So I was calling it Worcestershire sauce, and sometimes to be quick, I'd say Worcester, but this is the way it's spelled, guys. I don't know uh, why people were giving me a hard time about that. Worcestershire sauce. And then we've got vegetables uh, in a can, as well as an onion. I'm going to be using some of the onion that we used last time uh, for the dish that we did a couple months ago. Okay. I've got some olive oil. My rusty spoon, thank you. Um, salt and pepper. We've got our garlic powder. And the star of our show, uh, six tablespoons of butter. Or uh, slice, some sliced cheddar cheese. I don't know. For some reason I put the cheese in the butter thing. But uh, we do need six tablespoons of butter and some grated cheddar. Neither of them are really the star of the show, but I'm going to go ahead and get uh, also some butter that we're going to throw over the whole thing. Uh, now, okay. without further ado, thanks Malicept, let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, we're going to add our oil to a large skillet and place it over a medium-high heat for two minutes. So, here we go. Oh yeah, also, um, sorry, okay. Um, We want to uh, take how much uh, oil was it? They never put the ingredients in the same frickin' uh, I think it's two tablespoons of oil. So I'm going to grab my tablespoon thing. We're going to put this on, let's go ahead and say medium high start two tablespoons you really would never want more than two tablespoons of olive oil um, okay so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to uh, heat that for two minutes and we're gonna add the onions Okay, so this is a little bit uh, problematic. I shouldn't have done that because I haven't prepared my fucking onions, so we're gonna do that real quick. We have two minutes. Alexa, set timer for two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. Uh, I'm gonna do a pretty quick job of cutting here. I'm gonna probably just peel it by hand. Okay. Not my dog, man, thank you. And since this is an old onion, it's a little more difficult to navigate. Alexa, how much time left on the timer? You have one minute okay. and 20 seconds left on your two minute timer. Okay, we gotta get this done. Okay. Uh, Leonard, Leonem, thank you. It's usually not going to be this stressful, but I, I started the olive oil um, burning, and it's only supposed to be two minutes, and then these onions need to be ready to go in there. So, wow. Okay, it's starting to pop, too. That's not good. Ah, shit. I'm probably just going to break these up by hand. There's really no reason you can't break them up by hand. It's just onions, right? Alexa, how much time left on the timer? You have 30 seconds left on your two minute timer. 
Okay, let's separate the that shit from this. All right. Well, I think this is probably going okay. Uh, there we go. These are our onions. Alexa, stop timer. I've been doing this so long that I've been through every, just about every kind of troubleshooting situation that you can be in. You just want to stir it around. You know, the Romans apparently uh, used to sell their urine as a sort of toothpaste. That was a tidbit that I was reading while I was trying to look up uh, the origin of shepherd's pie. Okay. We have here uh, our onions doing nicely. Now we're gonna add the ground beef or ground lamb to the skillet. And we're going to break it apart with a wooden spoon. I don't have a wooden spoon, guys. But I have a, uh, I have a couple of other tools that we can probably use. Okay. Uh-oh, somebody's just woken up here. And he's pissed. Okay, so we got some onions going on. We're going to start adding our beef in there. And the idea is that you want to make it so that uh, there's no more pink in there, which is going to take a little while. Uh, just shooting ahead here with the uh, directions. It says here that we're going to add to the, uh, we're going to, oh, we're going to add our uh, spices. So in this case, I like to do okay. just a little bit of pampica, the regular kind. Also, I like to put just a tiny bit of cumin and a little bit of salt. And a little bit of pepper. And we're going to keep okay. stirring. Uh, if you're doing this at home, uh, hopefully you cut your onions before you put your olive oil in there because that wound up being problematic for me. But I'm going to say that this so far, despite that little hitch that we hit, uh, I think this is going pretty well. You're going to want to do this for about 30 minutes. You know, I was reading recently, obviously we're all familiar with the disease COVID, but uh, several years ago we had a, uh, a real close brush with this other disease called Ebola, which is terrible. Um, and one of the symptoms is that blood starts coming out of your eyes. But the doctors say that uh, that's actually a good thing. That's your uh, body using its natural resources to try to flush out the virus particles. So if you ever have Ebola and blood comes okay. out of your eyes, just know that everything is going to be okay. All right. Next up we have the meat is browned. We're going to add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. And again, I don't want to uh, take any grief for this. This is exactly how it's spelled. I spent about an hour looking for it, uh, different pronunciations of it. All right, where's my spoons now? Okay. All right, we're going to do one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. 
And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't know how much is supposed to go in there. This recipe just says add Worcestershire sauce, but it doesn't say, okay, and then we're gonna stir to combine for about one minute. Oh, shit. We're back to this problem that we have. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna let that simmer for a little bit and I'm gonna start uh, working on our garlic. Uh, we're gonna use maybe like, I've just got one garlic here, but I think that we're gonna use two of the bulbs. Son of a bitch, this is hard to get open. Okay, I got one bulb there, and let's go ahead and get one more. Does anybody know how to do this part? Making a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. When we're done with this thing, we're gonna be able to eat it, and that's all the reward that you're gonna need. Obviously, if you don't feel like doing all this shit, you could just go to the store and buy a shepherd's pie. I'm sure they'd have it in the supermarket or something. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we're going to get it any more peeled than that. So let's go ahead and cut it. It's supposed to be diced, but I'm a little worried about our about overcooking our meat. So I, I'm doing a little bit of a rush job on the garlic, but you know what, it's just for me. So I'm not really too worried about what the presentation is like. And you'll notice that a lot of the garlic uh, skin peels off as you cut it. So it's a little bit of a waste of time to try to peel the outside first. But all right, so let's go ahead. And sorry. Start throwing our garlics in there. I'm just going to take the ones that are finely chopped. Garlic is actually very good for you. It uh, cures uh, bad breath and. Uh, a lot of other health benefits. So, this is uh, starting to get very fragrant, which is what they say you're supposed to wait for while you're cooking. All right. Um, I feel like I haven't had a moment to just kind of chill. Okay, you can see that meat is getting very nice and brown, but I'm not gonna okay. stop doing this until those onions are translucent. Translucent means that if you shine a light to them, you can see right through them. So we still got a little ways to go. It's getting a little smoky, but that's okay. All right, very garlicky in here. Um, just, uh, it's always good to look ahead a little bit. Um, we've got our Worcestershire sauce. Uh, oh, next up we're gonna add uh, our flour and our tomato sauce. We're gonna stir until it's incorporated and no clumps of tomato paste remains. I see you guys have a lot of questions and I'm gonna try to get to them in a second here. But as you can see, we're, we're in a very stressful situation. But fortunately, I pre-spooned my flour, so we're just gonna dump that right in there. And in terms of our tomato paste, it's not telling me how much, okay. again, is supposed to go in there. I think I'm just gonna do like Alexa, how many tablespoons is a quarter of a cup? One quarter cup is four tablespoons. Okay, so this is a half cup, so I'm gonna do eight tablespoons. Now, I'm, 
See, the problem is I can't pour this because it doesn't come out. It's not like tomato sauce, or it kind of does. But uh, you have to do it with a spoon. So I'm going to do a half a cup, and I'm going to do eight tablespoons. It doesn't really uh, like to get off the spoon. A lot of times, uh, if you lube up the spoon, you'll be able to get it to slide off of that spoon a little bit easier. Let's see how many I got here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need two more. Tomato paste is basically tomato sauce and raw tomatoes all mixed for you ahead of time so you don't have to do the mixing. And it's good. It's very tasty. So now let's just stir that up. But the problem is it's sticky as all oh, fuck. So we're having a little bit of a heat wave here where I live. And um, they've asked us later today as a courtesy to try to limit um, the amount of power that we're using. So I'm going to be turning off the AC uh, at about 4 p.m. to do my part. Because, uh, you know, if everybody uses it at the same time, then it, you know, I guess it goes out or whatever. But... Um, the problem is I've got a lot of very hot stuff cooking here, so I think I'm probably just going to leave a big mess here when I'm done and then uh, just go away, maybe get a hotel or something. All right. What I'm using here is called a uh, induction hot plate which means that it doesn't really get hot, it just transfers uh, electrical heat to uh, the pot. I'm not really sure how it works, but it's pretty fascinating if you wanted to look it up. All right, well, this is looking very tomato-y and garlic-y and meaty and onion-y and Worcestershire-y and Pampika and Kamini. So I think we're doing okay. Let's see what uh, our next step is here. Um, oh yeah, I'm gonna let that sit for a second and maybe uh, we can answer some of your questions. I see quite a few. Uh, Limpy says, any, ch any plans of going, uh, opening a restaurant? Boy, that would be that would be really a life dream for me. Uh, I've done a little bit of catering that didn't really go very well, um, but opening a restaurant would be uh, that would be a bucket list item. Uh, Phoenix thirteen thirty three. When do we do the potatoes? Don't worry, the potatoes are coming and they're coming in a big way. Pasclin, I can you I can look. Can you look in the camera so I can make a selfie of us both? Did that work? Um, Phoenix1333 says, when do we do the potatoes? Oh, the potatoes are coming, and they're coming in a big way. Um, Hacklin, I already read that one. Uh, Kira Slavius. Do you think that Jesus Christ would eat this if it was part of his Last Supper? Absolutely. I don't see why, why he wouldn't. It's a delicious meal. Jesse, what do I use for the lube? Uh, you can use either a little bit of uh, butter or you can use olive oil. Um, Jesse says it again. What do I use for the lube? But I think she probably, or he, I don't know, did, did that twice. Um, Limpy, any plans of opening a restaurant? I'm seeing a lot of duplicate uh, questions here, which is a good idea because that's probably the only way that I'm going to get to them sometimes. So, um, let's see. Chuck Little, 
You should use the shaft of the knife for stirring so it doesn't dull the blade. Ah, not a bad idea. Hide White 2, did you buy potatoes in a different shop today so you didn't get scammed? Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, I don't remember what the dish was that we were making, but I was supposed to be getting yams. Or no, I was supposed to get uh, Russell potatoes, but they wound up being yams, but they put them in a saran wrap so you couldn't um, investigate them ahead of time, which is a little bit of a scam. And I took them home and found out they were yams. So I guess you could say I got yam scammed. Um, Kairosa says, Wait, so what do I pair with blue cheese? Blue cheese, I believe, is white. I know there's little bits of blue in there, but uh, overall it's white, so that would be a white wine item. The only time that wine pairing gets complicated is if you have something like, let's say you're making a ham sandwich, so your ham obviously is going to go with the red wine, but if you put it on white bread, white bread's going to go with white wine. Fine, you have one red wine, one white wine, but imagine this now. Let's say you put a slice of Swiss cheese on there. So Swiss cheese is white, so now you need two-thirds white proportion to one-third red. So your choices are either to have two-thirds of a glass of white wine, one-third of a glass of red wine, or just to make it even, you could add another red item, like maybe uh, some red meat on your ham sandwich. I like a, I don't know, beef, I guess, or whatever, but, you know, and then that would go, I don't know. It, it gets complicated. I, I would just say try to keep all of your foods the same color when you're serving wine. Uh... What if I'm eating, this is a uh, Rather 178, what if I'm eating white cheese with red bread? That's, yeah, then you're going to have to have white wine and red wine. Um, okay, so our next order of business here. Oh, we need to add our broth. Oh, shit, that's another problem. Uh, I don't have any broth, but I have something called a bouillon here. So, what you do here is you take one cup. I should have prepared this ahead of time. Very upset that I did not. But we're going to do this. I want one cup. This is a. Uh, I'm going to put that there. got some hot water here. One cup. Now we're going to add uh, this thing in there. It's called a bouillon. I'm not sure why, but it basically turns your water into broth. And it should just dissolve right away. When you dunk it in the water, it'll start to uh, dissolve. It should anyway. All right, so we're going to help it along a little bit because we don't really have that kind of time. It's not really a perfect system by any means. I'm trying to get it so that you can see what's happening here. I mean, I guess I could just throw it in our mix and it'll start to dissolve that way. But anyway, um, if you have real broth, I would recommend doing that instead. But yeah, so, okay, so we're going to add in our broth and our veggies. So let's go to our mix here and this is getting pretty nice and cooked, as you can tell. Oh shit, it's getting actually very cooked. I'm going to turn down the heat to medium. I might have overcooked it a little bit, but sometimes that's good. 
when your meat is uh, sort of fragrant, uh, you know, it's like having an open grill or something. The only thing I'm a little worried about is my pan, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and throw in our broth. And, uh, Plebe Shop says they used to love carbonated food back in the 70s. Uh, I believe that's true. I know that I did. And, um... Advo 114 says, is this considered vegan free? I think mostly um, the bouillon that I used, I, I believe, was made of chicken flour. Okay. Still looking good on that end. Now we need our canned veggies. So I've got a typical can of veggies here and somewhere I have a brand new awesome uh, can opener which is kind of fancy it's got a little button there that releases it and you just put it in here Problematic. I, I don't know why it's not uh, doing it. My fuck. Like, what the hell, man? Try the other side, maybe. Okay, I think the rim is too high or something. But we don't have time for this shit. We're, we're uh, starting to really cook our uh, our meat quite a bit. I'm gonna keep stirring it so it doesn't get too uh, charry. Um, oh, and we've added our broth, which is good. So you know what I'll do? I'm gonna put a uh, kind of a thing there. Okay. Uh, all right, well, we've got a little troubleshooting to do already. I've got other items that I can use at my disposal. Um, I'm a little pissed off about that situation that happened there, but... Guys, we might not have any ve uh, mixed veggies in our uh, shepherd's pie because we got a stupid can Ugh, that doesn't work. <sighs> this is not going to happen, I guess. I'm going to try one more time with this thing. This is this goes here and it doesn't work I'm pushing down okay so there's not going to be any uh, canned veggies which is okay actually because I have I do have back here or I thought I did have some uh, corn but I do not so we're going to skip the veggies uh, and we're going to go right to um, bringing it to a boil and then reduce to a simmer and we're going to stir for five minutes, occasionally stir. We're going to set aside, preheat the oven, which I don't need to do. 
So, all right, we're going to leave that for five minutes. We have five minutes. So, uh, a couple of questions. Uh, maybe this would be a good time for a song. Um, had quite a few requests for music this time around. Um, those uh, requests happen on the Discord, uh, if anybody wants to know. The Henry's Kitchen Discord is where you suggest recipes as well as uh, songs to be heard on, on the show. Uh, so, first request here that we have is, uh, I had two people request this song, Corn Checks and Smitty. Wanted to hear this song uh, from the band Toto. And uh, it's called Africa. So I'm just going to need to find it here. Uh, a lot of lyrics in this one, so I'm going to do the best that I can. You hear that uh, guitar there? song so I should have tried to maybe lower the key there but uh, I think it I think we pretty much killed our five minutes Alexa how much time left on the timer there are no timers set okay I forgot to put the timer on but uh, we'll do more music in a little bit meantime let's get on with the cooking Again, what we're going for, just to always have something in mind, is going to be our classic shepherd's pie. Um, this is going to be our meat base. And I think it's coming along pretty darn good, if you ask me. It's a little charred in some cases, but not okay. bad. Fantqua just subscribed for two months. Thank you, Fantqua. Okay, so uh, let's let's uh, start taking this serious here. Um, our next order of business. We're setting our meat mixture aside, so I'm going to push uh, stop. 
Oh, shit. No. Actually, we have to start working on the potato topping. We're going to place the potatoes in a large top, uh, pot and we're going to cover them with uh, water. Okay. So, all right. I'm going to take this. Okay. I think what they want us to do is to basically, uh, okay. I'm not sure why that's doing that. Um, place the potatoes in a large pot. So this is a large pot. I'm a little worried about the water displacement here. I might have put too much water. So hold on, I'm gonna just dump a little water here. I don't have a large pot. All I've got is this thing. But hopefully it'll hold two potatoes. Um, let's put it on high. All right, let's, let's get that sucker going. We've got place the potatoes in a large pot, cover the potatoes with water, bring the water to a boil, reduce to a simmer. We're going to cook that for 10 or 15 minutes. Drain the potatoes on a colander and return them to the pot. Okay, so we've got a little bit more time to kill, and uh, I have a couple more songs and a few more questions. Hacklin says, I put all the ingredients in a bowl and uh, put them in the oven. The plastic bowl melted and the smoke detector went off. Oh, geez. I can hear the fire trucks in front of my house. What do I do? Uh, you've got a fire issue there. Uh, listen to the firemen. The omnivious, you have to open up the bottom of the can. Fail fish. Uh, Mini Rogue says, did you try turning the can opener the other way around? I would love to get this working. Um, <clears throat> let's try it again. I mean, people are saying flip it. So I have here a can. You're saying do it on the other side. I'd love to. But it doesn't hook. Like it literally doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It spins, but it doesn't cut. That's why I'm thinking if I could get, if I could just get it open anyway, I don't care if it looks pretty or anything. Okay, we got that. Maybe if I stuck a knife. No, this is ridiculous. It's not going to happen, guys. Um, all right. Uh, Drag Job says, I don't have water for the bullion. Can I use whiskey instead? Yeah, absolutely. Let's see how we're doing with our boiling. Uh, I would like it if it was a little more boiling at this point, but I do see something happening. Alexa, is there a timer going? There are no timers set. So Alexa, set timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. Okay, so we have a little bit of time here, um, and also, I noticed that my, when I came over to put my meat in here, I noticed that the oven was not preheated, even though I thought it was. I think there might be an automatic off thing that happened.
now we've got that taken care of. Uh, I want to do a song for Linda uh, from the Discord, whose name was Linda816, who says that it's her birthday today. And what better song to do? Hold on. This thing is uh, starting to bubble up, so. This is, uh, sorry, I'm just getting rid of some of this water. I really need a bigger pot, but actually this is probably gonna work. Unfortunately, we're supposed to use four potatoes, but for now, I think that'll be fine. Okay, let's go ahead and do a song. It's a little birthday song that goes out to Linda816. It's nobody's birthday. No need for candles on the cake. Nobody's birthday, it was just a big mistake. It's nobody's birthday, no need for uncorking wine. Cause it's nobody's birthday, but mine. It's nobody's birthday. On the donkey today. No need to celebrate being alive when your dreams get swept away. It's nobody's birthday. No need for candles this time. Cause it's nobody's birthday but mine. There'll be no balloon animals. No Chuck E. Cheese, no animatronic singing dogs, there's none of this for me. Don't give me any fucking birthday cards, I don't need your sympathy. The Hallmark cards are all closed and shit, because there's none of this for me. Sorry, I'm a little bit concerned. Nobody's birthday, no need for candles at this time. The candles' tears were washed away by the teardrops in my eyes. Something like that. Here we go. It's nobody's birthday, not this time. Cause it's nobody's birthday. All right, so uh, there's that. Um, I've definitely got a little bit of a situation happening with uh, water displacement. And for those of you young cooks out there, if you're interested in knowing about how water displacement works, if you've got a container filled with water and it's all the way up to the top, when you put a potato in there, all of the mass or I'm sorry, the volume of the potato is going to take up the space that the water was once taken up and then it's going to overflow. I have two potatoes in there, so I misjudged how much overflow there was going to be. And if you get water going into an electrical device, such as this induction hot plate that I'm using, you could not only damage the item, but you could also cause a dangerous uh, electrical uh, situation. So that's water displacement. I believe it was discovered by Archimedes who uh, discovered it when he was going into his bathtub and I guess when he went into the bathtub the water overflowed and he famously said Eureka which has now become a common phrase. But uh, we're gonna let that uh, boil. Alexa, what time is it? 
The time is 12.01 p.m. I mean, Alexa, what is the uh, amount of time left on the timer? You have four minutes and 20 seconds left on your 10 minute timer. Okay. So we've got a little bit of time. I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, another song for you. This was a song that was requested by somebody a long time ago on the Discord, and I never got to it. But uh, you know, I I want people to know that I'm eventually gonna to get to all of them. But this was somebody named Ah uh, Hey U H H E I who requested a song that I'm gonna I've ne I had never heard before, but I'm gonna to try to do it. It's called Ocean Man by a band called Ween. Oh, shit. I, I've completely forgotten how it goes. I'm gonna have to listen to it for a second. Uh, Alexa, play Ocean Man by Ween. Ocean Man by Ween from Apple Music. Alexa, stop. Okay, I think I got it now. Ocean man, take me by the hand, lead me to the land that you understand. Ocean man, the voyage to the corner of the globe is a real trip. Ocean man, the crust of a tan man imbibed by the sand, soaking up the thirst of the land. Cast forth to the childlike man Ocean man The sequence of a life form Braised in the sand Soaking up the thirst okay. of the land Ocean man Wow, a lot of words in that one That I do not understand But uh, that goes up. That goes out to uh, hey, U-H-H-E-I uh, One of the Many people on Discord Who often give Uh Wonderful suggestions, so I appreciate that. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Fat Man, 1313. I wanted to make sure I'm reading that right. Says, uh, is Jose Suicidio still alive? Barely. And uh, who Teven? Can I hire you as a personal chef? Okay. Absolutely. If you want to hire me to cater your wedding or your anniversary or bar mitzvah or quinceanera or any of these things, uh, we can get together and talk about what dish you think would be appropriate. Um, okay. I've got a lot of them under my belt. And uh, thanks to the air breather for subscribing. Uh, Somebody, Frozen Bags, says, stab open the can with your knife. I tried. Um, somebody said, uh, cut the potatoes, please. Maybe I should have cut the potatoes ahead of time. I'm not sure. but All right, we've got more music coming up, but I think we have a lot of work to do over here. So, Alexa, how much time left? You have 50 seconds left on your 10 minute timer. Alexa's very loud, unfortunately. Uh, okay, 50 seconds is enough time for us to clear out a space here and try to figure out what in the fuck our next order of business is. Thanks for nothing on this, right? We're going to figure out how to open that one day because I can't just have vegetables sitting there. Can you imagine if I was in a survivalist situation and I needed to get into those veggies? But I think you find a way when it's really uh, an emergency like that. Okay, cleaning up a little bit. Next up we have, we have our meat set aside, which is good. Alexa, stop timer. We're gonna make the potato topping. So we're gonna be placing our potatoes into a large pot, which we did. We're gonna cook until the potatoes are fork tender. We're gonna drain them. We're gonna return them 
to the hot pot, let them sit in the hot pot for one minute. We don't have to do all that shit. Uh, and then we're gonna mash them. So we're gonna add our butter. So we'll, uh, you know what I'll do is I've got uh, this thing, which is based on my cat roast beef. I'd like to say that somebody gave it to me as a gift, but I actually just saw it and uh, got it. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get these potatoes mashed up. As a matter of fact, you know what? I've got a better idea. First, I'm going to cut the potatoes like somebody asked me to do. Um, whew. I'm going to push stop. doesn't stop there it goes all right and we're gonna just drain these oven is preheated that's good I'm gonna take out the water Ow. Ah, shit. very hot very very hot so let's uh, Dump those. Uh, like somebody said, we're gonna cut these up, but they're very, very hot. So I'm not gonna be too sure about how we do this. I know, I'm gonna use a uh, oven mitt. And just gonna start shaving off some of the side stuff. And it's coming off real easy. Now there are devices like a potato peeler that you could use but I don't really see the purpose of that because a knife basically does the exact same thing and most people have a knife this is a pretty sharp knife that I'm using so be careful if you're at home if you're at home and you're not a professional uh, person in the kitchen then you might want to go ahead and use I, I think the butter knife is a good one to start with because there's very little chance of hurting yourself okay set that aside there's a lot of setting aside that happens this uh, oven mitt is kind of hurting my coordination a little bit which is bowing me out but it's also keeping my hands safe um, which is good safety in the kitchen is very very important For the first couple of years that I was cooking, I was actually wearing a helmet. And uh, turns out that's not, the risk of head injury is not very strong. But uh, it's always better to be safe than sorry, no matter how much people want to deride you or mock you. You know, you'll be the one laughing when they put their head in the oven or something. And I don't know. Okay. So these are looking good. Let's cut them across this way. All right, so now let's put that into, I don't want to get the skin, so I just want to get Wow, that's hot. Ooh. Ocean man, something about the days and sand and it's not there. It's a good song. Okay, so now we have our potatoes. They're all cut and moist and uh, looking good. Now that we have the potatoes in there, we're gonna add our butter, and we want six tablespoons of butter, but I'm gonna show you a really cool trick that you can do with butter. You can see on okay. the side, it's got the tablespoons. Thanks, Logan Olia. Um, you've got the tablespoons on the side, so you don't even have to use your actual tablespoon, you just cut 
to that place. Okay. Where was it? Six tablespoons. I did it on the wrong side, so I'm just gonna go to two tablespoons. But there's actually a lot of butter. Oh, hi. In potatoes. Thanks, Jesse. Jesse gifted 10 subs. Thanks for that. Um, all right, so let's put our butter away. And starting to make a huge mess here, which I'm uh, not happy about, but that's okay. Let the potatoes. I'm gonna take a little bit of a coffee break here. All right, drain the potatoes. We've done that. Add butter half and half, which I don't have. I have milk, but I believe half and half is half milk, half cream. I do have some cream left over from a previous recipe, but let's first do. We have uh, garlic powder, which I'm going to use fairly liberally. Although we do have garlic in our meat mixture. So we've got garlic, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Just put a dash of cumin. And then maybe just a dash of our pampika. Okay. And now we've got butter. We've got our seasonings. Um, we need half and half. So I have uh, milk here. Uh, I thought I had cream. I should have cream. Not sure where it is. Hold on. I'm not sure what happened to my cream. It sucks. What the hell. Sorry, everybody. I, I really did think I had cream. Ah. So, I guess I'm just going to use cream or milk instead of half and half. So maybe I'll do half the milk. Alexa, how much milk is equal to one half and half? Here's what I found. According to reference.com, for most recipes and diets, one cup of half and half, whole milk or heavy cream is equivalent to one cup of evaporated milk. Was that helpful? No, not really, unfortunately. Thanks for your feedback. Okay. So we're just gonna, they were talking about evaporated milk or something, but I'm just gonna pour some milk over it and make it look nice. And uh, let's just start mashing it. At the end of the day, this is mashed potatoes. So that's not really something that we're gonna have too much difficulty with. But I really wanted to use my cream. I'm doing one last look. Just do not see it anywhere. Uh, okay, so we're gonna have to start mashing here. Um, now it's gonna be about trying to find the right tools. I have a really nice marble. Uh, this is a masher, but I don't think there's any way I can make that work with the uh, potatoes here in the bowl. So we're gonna find something. Ah. Here we go. Start by stirring them and get that butter all uh, melted. Uh, so what we're doing is we're mashing them and we're stirring them until all the ingredients are mixed together. Um, while I'm doing this, which looks a little bit labor intensive, uh, I want to mention to everybody that uh, I've added a Thursday night stream, so it's a 9 p.m. Pacific time where I do uh, songs and I'm also going to start playing games so starting tomorrow I'm gonna, I've got a couple of games that people have requested so 
uh, it'll be games, questions, uh, songs, uh, but no cooking really. I mean, we might do some cooking games, but for the most part, uh, cooking is a very taxing thing. And I think twice a week, maybe, is about as much as anybody can do it. I think Gordon Ramsay only does once a week. He's just been around so long that you see a lot of footage of him, but he basically makes one recipe a week. Same with a lot of these famous people. This isn't really mashing, unfortunately, which has got me a little pissed off. I might uh, might need to put it in the microwave. Let me just jump ahead here and see. Mash the potatoes till all the ingredients are mixed together. Add parm. I don't have any parm, but I have some other types of cheeses. This is very unfortunate. I thought that maybe it would be nice and ready to whatever okay all right so um, let's let's uh, assemble the casserole it's time to assemble our casserole and the way that we're going to be doing that is we're going to be pouring our meat mixture into a nine by nine baking okay. dish so I have here a baking dish that looks exactly nine by nine, which is nice when that works out. So let's start with our meat mixture. I'm gonna turn off my hot plate because it's got me a little nervous. Um, and let's go ahead and add our meat mixture into our plate. I think that's what it said. It said, pour the meat mixture into a nine by nine inch baking dish and spread it out to an even layer. I think we can use our potato masher for this. This thing's very heavy. Uh, if you're doing this at home, I'd love to see how your meals are coming out. Uh, you can do that on the Discord. Alright, so there is our meat and we want to flatten it out like such. Looks good to me. Be nice if it had some fucking veggies in there, but I guess we don't have that. Um, all right. <sighs> Next up, we are going to uh, carefully spread into an even layer. If the baking dish looks very full, place it on a rimmed baking sheet so that the filling doesn't bubble over. Bake uncovered. Well, that can't be it. What do we do with our potatoes? Assemble the casserole. Oh, spoon the mashed potatoes on top of the meat. Spread into an even layer. Now, these aren't totally mashed, which is unfortunate, but I'm gonna tell you this is something that I think about a lot in cooking. These are potatoes. Whether they're mashed or not, they're still going to be potatoes. And we're going to put them in the oven. So they're going to mash a little bit in the oven. And the other thing to keep in mind is that these recipes aren't always accurate. I didn't know that there was supposed to be cream. And I'll bet you the fact that I didn't have cream is why we came out with a potato dish that looks a little more like what we have here instead of a mashed look. The last thing we're gonna do, I don't have Parmesan cheese, um, but I do have this kind of cheese, uh, which is more of a cheddar. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put it over top like this. Um, 
it's definitely very fragrant at this at this point, which we like. Uh, there we go. So next uh, order of business is that we're going to be putting this. We're going to bake this uncovered for 25 to 30 minutes, and we're going to cool it a little bit uh, before we serving. So. I'm probably not going to do the whole 25 to 30 minutes, but I'll put it in there a good time, amount of time. So this is our shepherd's pie, folks. And uh, actually, it said it doesn't bake uncovered. It doesn't say how hot it's supposed to be. That's the kind of shit that that upsets me with these internet recipes. So. I went with 400. You know what? I might do it at 450. Um, all right. So we're going to let that go. Alexa, set timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, starting now. And uh, let's take a look at some of the questions you have. Kairosa says, uh, it's okay, Henry. Most creative geniuses are only understood and have success after they die. And that is true. Um, one time, uh, my friend's uh, little nephew uh, showed me a picture of uh, something that he drew in uh, his class. He's, he was like in first grade or something like that. And it was just this jumbled mess with crayon scribblings and it didn't make any sense or whatever and uh, he asked if I like his drawing and I said um, I don't understand it I don't get it but I did want to make it very clear to him that a lot of artists are not appreciated until well after they're dead so he still has a chance in that regard uh, so thanks for that Kairosa Raziel's layman uh, is it okay if I don't put the cumin in the potatoes? I put some in the meat mixture, but I have a two-hour refractory period. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you have them in the meat mixture, I think you're going to be fine. Oh, what's happening here now? Uh, we have a very uh, angry... He's going to eventually make his way over here. I thought I might be able to get the camera on uh, okay. roast beef, but uh, that didn't work. Um, Limpy says, take it out of your bowl and use the masher. Okay. Okay. Gigas Soy, if you put the potatoes back on the cutting board, you can use your marble masher. Yeah, I... I don't think we really need to worry about mashing them, although that is a good idea. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, maybe do another song for you here. I've got a song for you that uh, was actually recommended to me uh, by Quanto, who's uh, one of the people who helps me with a lot of uh, the technical aspects of the show. And uh, this, this song is... Uh, Apparently a very popular one with the younger folks. So let me uh, go ahead and find it here. Um, hmm. I need to pull it up here. Uh, okay. Thanks, Lip Limpy. Okay. Uh, these lyrics don't make a lot of sense to me, but they might to you. So I'm just going to increase the size here. Check. Testing. One, two, three. Are you ready? Adrenaline is pumping. 
generator, automatic lover, atomic, atomic, overdrive, blockbuster, brain power. Call me a leader, cocaine. Don't you try. Don't you try it, innovator, killer machine. There's no fate, take control, brain power, let the bass rip oh, 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 oh. cat who's very distressed probably as a result of some of those uh, high notes um, that we can do with our uh, yeah I am a little worried about uh, roast beef here my cat because he's sort of looks um, I don't know what the word would be maybe a little bit out of sorts like just kind of slightly off put and I feel like maybe that's sort of the theme of the day is feeling uh, a little bit off put I started out with a little bit of allergies and um, some of your questions were making me think a lot about things. Uh, Anam140 says, my cat died yesterday. I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, no one lasts forever on this planet, animals and humans included. And uh, it's something that we have to think about. And uh, Cooking is really a good time to think about all that type of stuff because uh, there's so much downtime. Um, Gigasoy is an impossible meat, basically a veggie. Wow, what a great point that is. I've already got veggies in there because I used impossible meat. So I think that's nice. I'm still pissed off that I couldn't get that stupid thing to work, but, uh, but that's a positive way to look at it. You got to be positive. Um, that's a very important thing. So, uh, let's see again, speaking of positivity, this is what we are going to be getting at the end of this. So you've got to keep your eyes on the prize, as they say. Uh, I want to do something a little bit fun here. Um, in the early days of me, uh, doing, uh, YouTube cooking, I was not only, um, looking around at a lot of videos of people cooking but I also needed to handle sort of the technical aspects of it so it's not easy when you're by yourself and you're setting up a tripod and I didn't even have a tripod in the day because what happens when you push the button and then you have to walk around and then step into the frame because I didn't have editing equipment and one of the guys that I used to watch that I think handled it pretty well was a gentleman named Frank. So I'll show you a little bit of Frank's uh, stuff here. Um, this is Frank. Um, he does a... Hello, my name is Frank. I will be your guide on our walk today in the park. We're at uh, Maple Creek Park in Vicula, Georgia. Now to get here, it's not very hard. Just so what he's doing is a, a virtual tour to Athens, Georgia, and get off on Wonder Highway of national parks. It's only about a mile down on Maple Creek uh, Road. So it's a wonderful park. Uh, the trail here is one mile in length. 
Uh, there's a Waffle House up the street uh, on Winder. I'm Highway, just kind of skipping around. We don't have to watch the whole thing. And uh, uh, there's a quick trip there. It has excellent sandwiches. So, uh, thanks again. If you should want to see any of my other videos. Uh, let's see. So, here. this is a good place to walk if you have health So, this is problems. Frank L. Sharp. And there's several. But Here's the uh, pavilion at the park. This is another one situation barbecue, where uh, grill here at the park. The Hello again. Thanks for coming along with me on the trip. So yeah, um, that's a lot of times uh, what I was looking at to try to get uh, the technique of. Uh, starting the camera and then walking into the frame, uh, which is good if you don't have a tripod or an automatic way to uh, start it. Okay, so um, let's see if there's some other people here. Uh, Waken B2K, Waken B2K says, "What is your favorite dish to cook, Henry?" Well, I, you know what, I might say. Uh, after today, I think shepherd's okay. pie might be a good one. Pilskman just uh, resubscribed for three months. And Pilskman, I have to say, has been there from the very beginning offering up uh, help. And uh, I think this is probably a good time, as good a time as any, for me to, uh, to give a shout out to all the wonderful people who've been helping me through this Twitch journey. And... Um, I want to start with the moderators, Dingo Bop, Fawcan, Dom Beef, Hottest Bear, Do Dingle, Dog Doggy, Dr. Flanges. And uh, also tomorrow, I believe Bakus is going to be helping us on the Thursday night stream because uh, it's a totally different time zone. So we'll look forward to that. Thanks, Bakus. Daisy Blossom, Melon95, and Pilskman, who just subscribed. And... Um, also, happy birthday, Linda816, from the Discord. And um, thanks, uh, Sir Doom, Bumble Vision, the LGX, my friend Bill Larkin, music. Obviously, Nim, uh, who uh, was nice enough to come on and play games uh, with me on my stream on Sunday. Nim got me started on this whole thing. Plus, uh, so many other uh, great... Uh, people who, who've uh, shared my videos and um, I appreciate it. Uh, Forsen, Moon Moon, Emaru, uh, XQC, and many more. So um, I, I started just, uh, you know, I was doing my thing on YouTube and all of a sudden I started seeing people uh, come around and, and show on, on my Twitter and stuff. Uh, picture of a frog and I was like what's happening here and uh, they said you got to come over to twitch and that's what I've been doing now and it's been several months and um, it's been going really well as a matter of fact I'm happy to announce that in September I'm going to be my, doing my first sponsored podcast I tried to get the people at this uh, the people that make this can opener they're called uh, OXO brand um, to sponsor me but they didn't and I'm kind of glad they didn't because this thing didn't really work out very well anyway but um, but I've got two sponsored podcasts coming up in September so that's going to be a lot of fun and we'll know more about that soon but um, anyway uh, maybe I'll try to show uh, well Alexa how much time left on the timer you have seven minutes left on your 20 minute timer. Okay, seven minutes. Why don't I go ahead and do uh, another song from uh, Jose Suicidio? Going all the way back to 2012, I think, with this next song. Um. <laughs> get the first holy guacamole holy guacamole I just got hit by a car and you're the one who pushed me in the street 
swept me off my feet, put me in a coma, making guacamole, roly green and moly, I just got mauled by a bear. Guacamole, Officer Stromboli, I just got shot in the face. And you're the one who had the smoking gun. Life is just no fun whenever I'm with you. A little instrumental. Guacamole by Jose Suicidio or Suicidio. Okay. Uh, Brickstone just resubscribed for two months. Thanks, Brickstone. Um, I'm really looking forward to the summertime being over. Uh, I don't know if I'm a huge fan of it, especially with all the heat that we've been having. And I've got an oven on and I've got the AC on, so those are both creating like a Okay. Fight, you know, it's I've, I've got two appliances fighting for which temperature they want the room to be in, and I don't like fighting, and uh, so I'm thinking the fall will bring some nice things. The leaves will fall off the trees. Um, the weather will get a little cooler, and um, my favorite time in the fall is uh, Halloween. So I'm going to make sure during the whole month of uh, October we're gonna be making Halloween stuff so if you have Halloween uh, recipes that you want to see please mention them in the discord um, but uh, Alexa how much time left on the timer you have two minutes and 50 seconds left on your 20 minute timer oh we're very close there so uh, maybe I'll just finish off with one more quick song uh, Okay, this is, uh, this is one called Shit on a Shingle, which by the way, uh, it's, I recently had uh, someone send me uh, a picture, I'm going to grab it for you really quick here. Uh, I'm gonna have to find it at a different time, I think, because it's just not uh, not coming to me. But uh, shit in a sh on a shingle is a real thing, and I'm gonna show you a picture that was sent to me uh, that that they were selling it at the Whole Foods, which I thought was pretty cool. I'm gonna try one more place where it could be. Um, yeah, I don't. I seeing it for some reason but uh, anyways sorry about that uh, okay so let's go ahead and just close out with this song um, and then we'll pull out our food uh, shit on a shingle which is a dish that was served to uh, military uh, members um, during World War II and also the Korean War 
and uh, it just feeds a hell of a lot of people. We made it here a couple months ago and had a lot of fun with it, but this is a traditional song about shit on a shingle. No one knows who wrote it or what it means, but... Uh... Don't look now, shit on a shingle, everybody run for the western side. Don't look now, shit on a shingle, everybody's drinking turpentine. Don't look now, shit on a shingle, everybody run for the woods. Someone's shitting on a shingle. lyrics they get for these traditional songs I'll tell you but uh, okay well I think it's uh, it's getting to be that time um, where we're gonna go to our oven here and see what the hell we ended up with I think it'll probably be fine right it's just mashed potatoes with a little bit of other stuff in there um, so without further ado, Alexa, how much time left on the timer? You have less than 10 seconds left on your 20 minute timer. Okay. Alexa, stop timer. First, uh, I'm gonna stop the oven because it's very hot. Wow, this looks delicious. Oh boy, but it's very hot. Uh, folks, I think we have just made ourselves some very delicious uh, pot, I'm sorry, shepherd's pie. So uh, it's very hot though, but I'm still, I don't have tons of time because I have to work on other recipes and such. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start taking it off right now. Uh, now when I made this before, of course, it was uh, thrown in the trash by my neighbor Bill that I was cooking with. So I'm gonna call this, uh, a success because nobody's throwing it in the trash and Bill is no longer with us so I want to uh, give a shout out and even so much as dedicate this this dish to Bill. All right well it ain't uh, it ain't clean uh, but it sure does look pretty damn tasty to me. Shepherd's pie. Um, that's going to fill you up. And uh, I, I don't think I'm going to have to eat dinner. I mean, I don't think I'm going to have to make dinner for the next week. Um, right on. Uh, let's see how we're doing up against our... So there's... In, somebody brought it up that they use a lot of trick photography and in these internet pictures of food. You can see they uh, they added some green in there after the fact, some Photoshop or something like that to give it more color. Um, but I'd say for the most part, we've got our meat and our potatoes, and it might not be as pretty as theirs, but it certainly is going to be as tasty. So I'm going to very uh, looking very forward to getting getting into this. Shepherd's pie. Very hot. Yeah, it's delicious. But very hot. The potatoes never got mashed. I don't know. It might have been a type of potato that doesn't um, mash well, or perhaps it could have been that um, I didn't have any cream, and I don't know what the fuck happened to my cream. It's. I'm sorry about the language every now and then. I want to say that when it comes to foul language in the kitchen, you just have to sort of excuse it because the kitchen is a very, very stressful place. You've got 
flames, sharp objects flying at you, extremely hot surfaces, so much can go wrong, plus you have timers. It really is a little bit like, uh, like a war. And um, sometimes, uh, you know, soldier, soldiers will throw some language around, you know, like shit on a shingle is an example. But, um, and that's, that's kind of what you're doing in the kitchen. But I'd say a shepherd's pie goes, this is not bad. Not bad at all. So um, let's see if anybody has any, any questions. Uh, I'm Jam says you should do a streamer cook-off show. That sounds good. Uh, for my last Thursday night, I did a, um, I did a bit where uh, I had the LGX and Bumble Vision, and I uh, dictated to them how to make my Henry's Chili for One, and I think it came out pretty good. I think that one's still up if on the VODs if you want to watch that. And um, for not this one tomorrow night, but a week from tomorrow night, I'm going to uh, have another streamer who's going to come on, and uh, she's going to dictate a... Um, I know her name in real life, but I don't, I don't remember her. I'm going to have to get... But anyway, we'll, she's uh, going to dictate to me a recipe, and I'm going to make it. But the trick is that I'm not going to know what it is. She knows what it is. I'm just going to have all the ingredients, and then at the end, we're going to have some dish that uh, she's going to dictate to us. So there will be some, uh, some collaborative streaming cooking type stuff like that so i appreciate that other questions um okay so uh utvol4 says my three week old son heard you say the f word and now he's swearing like crazy that's adorable that's cute um martin canine oh martian canine says, I have a crush on a horse. Will this dish improve my chances with her? Uh, yeah, that, uh, um, I, I'm not sure if I can help much in that department, but I have heard about the, the particular thing that you're talking about. Um, half an hour four says, Henry, do this IRL, which means in real life. I guess what they're saying is maybe to do it live. Is that what they mean? I mean, to do it like in a live show. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, Gandalf the Mandoff says it's potato au gratin now. You know what? Now that I think about it, you're absolutely right. Uh, this is basically potatoes au okay. gratin, but mixed with some meat. And I guess that's kind of what we were going for if you look at the main dish. Potatoes au gratin is from the same general part of the country, I'm sorry, of the world, as uh, shepherd's pie is. Um, Toan uh, Nugent, uh, Toan Guyan set one says, uh, yours looks way tastier. That's very cool to hear. Thank you, and it, and it is tasty. Falkan says, what would you tell someone that's scared of vegetables? Uh, okay. I, I actually did not eat vegetables for the first 48 years of my life. And then uh, I started getting into asparagus because somebody told me it was good for you. And uh, you know what, Falcam, what I would say is start with uh, asparagus. They're um, interesting. Uh, you can grill them. Uh, they may be scary to someone who's scared of vegetables. I, I guess the least scary vegetable I could think of would be corn. But um, they got to get over it because uh, vegetables have fiber in them, uh, which is good for your digestive system. And I, as someone who's suffered from irritable bowel syndrome for years, I can tell you that it's no party. Speaking of which, Raziel's Lemon says, I have shit on a shingle often. I'm a roofer with IBS. Okay, so yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Mechanic Kitten. Coil raided you. Oh, okay. 
Coil. Thank you, Coil. I appreciate that. And uh, Mr. Vade says, I've had your COVID song stuck in my head for a week. Oh, yeah, the COVID song. Um, I, maybe I'll try to have that one ready for next time. Sometimes I have to refresh myself on some of these lyrics. Oh, hey. Style Cramps just gifted one sub. Um, oh, Falkan says Bill Larkin Music subscribed earlier. Bill Larkin Music is an amazing performer. And if you like uh, watching live music, not only does he take requests, but he uh, improvises his own words throughout the, um, throughout the stream and uh, throughout the songs. And it's, it's really something amazing to watch. And, um, Wake and B2K says, what is your favorite dish to cook, Henry? I'm curious. I would probably say shepherd's pie. And, um, Hacklin says, what do, what do you think of Jamie Oliver? Uh, I've heard of Jamie Oliver, but I don't know enough to have formed an opinion. Um, Beef Cleats says, my parents are thinking of getting a divorce. Okay, well that's not always a bad thing. Maybe they don't get along. So maybe that's a good thing. Um, and on 140, do this emote in real life. Okay. Okay, I'm not sure if I understand that one. Thanks. Uh, that was someone named uh, McDonut One. Oh, MXC Donut One. So, uh, okay. Well, everybody, I'm gonna sit here with my cat, who's somewhere around here, and enjoy my shepherd's pie or potatoes au gratin, as someone mentioned. And again, I'm not going to have to cook for a week now because all I'm going to do is take the rest of this, store it in little uh, baggies, put them in the refrigerator, and every time that I need food, I'll just take one of those baggies and put it in the microwave, poke holes in it, of course, for safety, otherwise it'll explode. Um, put that on a dish, throw on an episode of Better Call Saul or whatever show you're watching, and um, you've got yourself a very fulfilling Saturday night all by yourself, not even needing any people around you. So, sincere thanks to the moderators and all the people rating and spreading the word and the subscribers. Um, I hope you're having a good August. And from all of us here at Henry's Kitchen, um, which is basically just me and my cat. Uh, I want to say a sincere thank you and hope to see you tomorrow night, 9 p.m. PST, where I'm going to be doing a variety stream um, and playing some games and uh, trying to get into that. So thanks for joining me, everybody, and I hope you have a great day and a great rest of the week.